Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and today I have an interesting device to show you. Several months ago, my buddy Bob Kirkpatrick, who's one of the owners of the Illumitan Company, and I recently made a video where I visited that company. I'll give you the link to that here presently. But he came down to visit me along with a friend. We had a nice visit. He took me out for a nice lunch, and he said, I've got something interesting here for you. And this is the box that he received it in. And he said, uh, do you know what this is? And I said, I have no clue. And then he went on to explain it. Those top two videos are my field trip to Illumitank several years ago. Check those out if you have not already. And Illumitank has a neat website. Check that out. Bob Kirkpatrick and his brother Terry are co-owners and great guys and good friends of mine. Now, he didn't give this to me, he loaned it to me, so I said I'll get it back to you in a few months, and so I wanted to show you before I take it back of uh, exactly what it is and a little bit on how it's used, although I've never used it myself. Does anyone out there know what this is? I was, in fact, going to include it in my uh, What Is It video, but I'm just going to show it to you now, and it came with an indicator. And there is a name on it. He bought this over eBay and it's called a bore set. It is patent pending. I tried to look it up. I could find nothing on it, nor could I find it listed on YouTube. He bought it from a man in California that apparently manufactures them. And his name is Bob Bender. Well, did you figure out what it is yet? And is this a clue? Yes, you're right. It fits onto a boring head. And the indicator fits into this hole right here. And is used in conjunction with the tool. I guess that's as far in as it goes. So, let's talk about this a little bit. I'm sure you have used boring heads on your milling machine and this is a Criterion uh, DBL202 and they made a lot of different models but sometimes as you're approaching the final dimension and you have only a half a thousandth to take off you're a little bit hesitant in just moving this a half a thousandth is it truly going to move that amount is it going to deflect a little bit when you tighten your your uh, gibs here on the dovetail so you're a little tense that you might spoil the work. So this device will help you set it more accurately. Now when Bob was here, he had it mounted on a boring head, and it was not this one, but it sure looked very similar. And I said, Bob, I've got one of those. Take this back with you. You may need to use it. I don't want to get it lost on you. And uh, so I just recently tried to mount it on this, and I assumed this was two inches. And I assumed wrong, because in fact it's a little bit less. So this doesn't fit quite right on here without a shim. Now here's how it fits onto the boring head. Notice there's a little pin right here. Now that pin goes in this hole, which is on the opposite side of the little dial. And it'll fit on in this manner. You don't have to fit it over this way because you wouldn't want to have to take the boring head off of the machine in order to do that. And then there's a little cam lock here that will lock it into place. But as I said, it's a little loose. Matter of fact, it's too loose, Latrec. So I'm going to put this little 10,000th shim right here under the cam and that seems to take care of the situation. Like that, and now it's quite tight. And the pin is in that slot. And at this point, the indicator can be mounted. And that's a little bit of a oil light bushing there. And it fits in like this. Now I'm showing you this at the bench because I think it's easier than attempting to show you this after it's mounted on the machine and this comes right up against that uh, surface right there. 
you still have access to these set screws and to the dial. Notice that the indicator that came with this is in diameter reading two tenths of a thousand. So it's a very accurate and nice federal indicator, top of the line. Very little movement here. Also, there is a set of directions that came with that. I'm not going to show them to you in case they're copyrighted. I don't know for sure. But uh, in there, it also mentions that you cannot use it if you have more than a quarter inch of the slide sticking out. Lots of boring heads are square in shape, such as these two criterions. And of course, the bore set could not be used with these boring heads. And so, the indicator would be mounted in the bore set as such. Watch the probe here, the tip. Bring that right up against it and tighten. And of course, you want to make sure that you still have some travel. And then turning it around like this, I have my Allen wrench in the little graduated dial and I can move it in and out. And the beauty of this is I don't have to worry about backlash because I'm getting my reading here, not on the little dial here that would be subject to error by backlash. Okay, now the bore set is mounted on the Bridgeport mill, have the Criterion boring bar in the spindle, and uh, the indicator in place and I cannot emphasize enough the danger here if you would turn the machine on while this is still attached. It is meant to be on there only momentarily while you make your uh, adjustment and uh, your measuring and then take it off or it will fly across the room destroy itself and it might destroy you. So take warning when you use this. And here is how you use it. At some point as you are uh, machining your project, you're getting close to the dimension, perhaps you've already checked it with a scale, and then maybe you used uh, your digital calipers or your dial calipers or whatever, or an inside micrometer. I often like to use a telescoping gauge, but now you're getting close, within two or three thousandths, and you're just a little bit afraid of running over and ruining the workpiece. Remember also use as thick and large a boring bar as you can because there is a tremendous amount of flex in a boring bar, especially the more slender ones and more flex when you're taking a deep cut. So take several passes without increasing the uh, depth of cut and then we are ready to take our final reading with this. Okay, the indicator tip is up against the actual boring head and I've got my adjustment uh, wrench on the other side and let's say that I have one and a half thousandths to go. You would zero this out and then make your adjustment and it really doesn't matter if you go the wrong way by accident because you'll be able to take out that uh, backlash very easily with this and I would turn it one and a half thousandths. Take the whole device off, take another cut, measure and see if you're on and if not you can install this again and remember that this indicator reads in two ten thousandths so it's a very accurate dial on here and it's a good indicator and then you could uh, take off the final two tenths of a thousandth if that's what there was and remember this is going to be direct reading so if you move it in two tenths of a thousand it's going to take off two tenths of a thousand because it's diameter reading according to what it says here on the dial and you may not be used to using that type of indicator and really that's just a lot more accurate than using the little built-in dial so that's it ladies and gentlemen, that's the bore set tool. And when you're done, just take the wrench out and you can very quickly take it off and you're ready 
to start cutting. Hope you like this. This is Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, saying so long for now.